On the 24th of October 1980, it was announced that Tom Baker would leave Doctor Who after his seventh season. The producer at the time, John Nathan Turner, had already made some radical changes to the programme. He had introduced a new title sequence, new incidental music, a new logo, new costumes, a new master, new companions, to name but a few. This was all just in his first season in charge and Tom Baker's final season. During season 18, there is an evident changing of the guard. By the end of the season, none of the main cast are the same main cast from the very start of the season. Peter Davison was quite well known when he was cast as the Fifth Doctor. He had been appearing in the series All Creatures Great and Small. In this sense, his casting was a tad unusual as it's not that common for household names to be cast in the role. Peter Davison had the unenviable task of succeeding Tom Baker, who had totally dominated British popular culture over the last seven years. However, ratings for Tom Baker's final season weren't too favourable, so John Nathan Turner and Peter Davison also had to breathe new life into a show that many people now felt was past its prime. For the first 18 years of the show, Doctor Who aired on Saturdays. However, that would change in January 1982. Doctor Who began airing twice weekly on Mondays and Tuesdays in what at the time was seen as an experiment to increase viewership. The BBC were already growing impatient with the show and would have likely cancelled it sooner had the ratings not improved. The ratings most certainly did improve, with over 9 million viewers on average tuning into the new season. Part of this viewership increase was down to the new Doctor, but the new schedule undoubtedly played a part and the risky gamble worked. Due to this, Doctor Who would not return to a Saturday slot until 1985. Anti Ailing was introduced as the Master at the end of the Keeper of Trarkin in season 18, having appeared throughout the story as Tremas, whose body gets possessed by the Master. The Master would be a recurring character for the first time since the Pertwee era, when Roger Delgado played the part. The Master appears in the Fifth Doctor's debut story, Castro Valva, which concludes an unofficial, loose Master trilogy. Ailing and Davison were some 19 years apart in age, and this makes for a different on screen Master Doctor dynamic. Not that that's a bad thing. However, the Master wasn't the only one of the Doctor's nemesises to make a reappearance in Season 19. The Cybermen were the main adversaries during the Second Doctor era, appearing in four stories during that time. Since Troughton left, the Cybermen went from being regular opponents of the Doctor to appearing on a very irregular basis. After 1968's The Invasion, the Cybermen did not appear again until 1975's Revenge of the Cybermen, having been absent throughout the entirety of the Pertwee era. Revenge of the Cybermen was also the only Cybermen during the Tom Baker era. John Nathan Turner wanted to bring back the Cybermen in the Fifth Doctor's debut season. He resisted bringing back the Daleks for a proper story until 1984. The Cybermen returned in 1982's Earthshock, a story which at the time was so concealed in mystery, JNT didn't want the title to include any mention of the Cybermen, so the writer Eric Sayward settled on Earthshock for the title. The Radio Times did not cover Earthshock, as JNT declined an offer them to appear in the studio during filming. It's fairly interesting to me that, in a pre-internet world, JNT was still keen to keep things secret with viewers until they sat down to watch it. It strikes me as a real dedication to his work. Beyond the return of the Cybermen, Earthshock is best remembered for including the death of Adric, one of the Doctor's companions. Adric's death came as a shock and was the first death of a companion since 1965. Earthshock is regarded as one of the greatest ever Cybermen stories and one of the best ever Doctor Who stories. Season 19 was considered a success, both in terms of the ratings and the overall critical response, and nearly 40 years later is still well regarded by Doctor Who fans. The season isn't without its problems, however. Having three full-time companions led to an overcrowded TARDIS team, and in this situation, there's always going to be one companion that is neglected. Peter Davison is fantastic in his debut season, completely reinventing the role in his image. Anthony Ailing is an utter delight on screen, and despite the famously low budget, some of the stories have genuinely good production value, in particular Fort of Doomsday and Earthshock. With a successful season and the return of two classic foes, the stage was set for Doctor Who's 20th anniversary season. Season 20, perhaps rather expectedly, includes many returning adversaries. The season opener, Ark of Infinity, featured the return of Gavray, the Time Lord, and Omega, who had previously appeared in the 10th season opener and anniversary serial, The Three Doctors. Colin Baker, who had gone to be cast as the Sixth Doctor, appeared in Ark of Infinity as Commander Maxill. Season 20 continued to air twice weekly, however it aired on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. This may explain why the ratings dipped to an average of 7 million. The season, however, was all building up to the big anniversary special that November, The Five Doctors. To be honest, The Five Doctors is such a bonkers episode with so much going on that I could really dedicate an entire video to it, but I won't. There is still so much to talk about. The story was initially titled The Six Doctors, and would have featured the Cybermen as the main villains trying to gain the power of the Time Lords. There would have also been a decoy robot first Doctor, hence the title of The Six Doctors. The script was set to be written by longer time Doctor Who writer Robert Holmes. However, Holmes quit the project and the script went when he did. Holmes was replaced by Terence Dix, another long time Doctor Who writer who wrote practically an entirely new story. Tom Baker declined an offer to appear in the special and as a result the role of the first Doctor was significantly largened. 
Speaking of the first Doctor, Richard Herndall, who had previously appeared in Blake 7, was cast as the original Doctor. William Hartnell passed away in 1975. Herndall played the first Doctor in a similar way to how Hartnell did, and the incarnation is written accurately to how he first appeared. Herndall got quite a lot of screen time as one of the most memorable aspects of the special. In particular, the scenes between the first Doctor and the fifth Doctor are a real highlight. Every incarnation of the Doctor of that time appeared in some way. Tom Baker appeared via unused footage from the unfinished serial Sharda, and Patrick Troughton and John Pertwee returned. Perfect slipping back into their roles. The fan service is also something to be admired. There's so much detail, and like I said, this special could warrant its own video, but I need to move on. Season 21 was Davison's final season. Davison decided to leave after three seasons, having taken advice from Patrick Troughton. This has gone down in Doctor Who fan circles as the Troughton rule. To only do three seasons and to leave the audience wanting more of you. This is perhaps a good time to talk about the tone of the Fifth Doctor era. On the surface, it may appear that it's a very fun era, with any dark undertones being ironed out, but that's completely false. Granted, there are some sillier stories, but that's true of any Doctor era. However, Season 21 is the darkest Davison season, and it's not exactly subtle. The Davison era gradually gets darker and darker with each new season, so perhaps in 1984 this wasn't such a shock to hardcore Doctor Who fans. Complaints were being made in a similar way to how they were being made in the Hinchcliffe era of the 1970s. People talk about the violence in Who starting during Colin Baker's first season, but really the signs were there a whole season early. Excluding a cameo appearance in The Five Doctors, the Daleks had been absent from Doctor Who for five years, but they returned in Resurrection of the Daleks. Resurrection of the Daleks was written by Eric Saywood, the script editor and the writer of season 19's Earthshot. Having brought the Cybermen back in a brilliant way, it was hoped that Saywood would be able to do the same thing to the Daleks, whose reputation as a feared television monster had ebbed away over the years. Resurrection of the also feature the return of Davros, who was now played by Terry Malloy. Malloy is fantastic in role, and for many people is the definitive portrayal of Davros. Resurrection of the Daleks has a very high death toll. Only a handful of characters survived. The violent nature of Doctor Who stories wasn't such an issue a few years ago, but nearly every story in season 21 features a high death toll. Tegan Javanka, as played by Janet Fielding, left the show, having joined in Dogopolis, Tom Baker's final story. This marked a clear change, and that a new Doctor was on the horizon. On another note, I I find it interesting that JNT waited until near the end of the Davison era to reintroduce the Daleks. After Resurrection of the Daleks, the Fifth Doctor only appeared in two more stories. Peter Davison's final story, The Caves of Androzani, is regarded by many as one of the very best stories of Doctor Who and is one of my personal favourites. Robert Holmes returned to write the story and his writing genius is as clear as ever. There's no galactic army to face in this story, the threat is far more personal than that. Christopher Gable, who appeared as the multi-layered villain Shara's Jet, is fantastic and some members of the audience may question whether he's a villain or not due to his complex and interesting nature. John Normington is brilliant as Morgus. In fact, the entire cast is fantastic. Classic Who gets a lot of stick for having wooden acting, but I challenge those critics to watch this story. The quality during the Davison era is somewhat inconsistent, but that is more than made up for with his practically perfect final outing. While that story concluded the Davison era, it did not conclude season 21, but as this video is on the Fifth Doctor era, that is a story for another time. The Davison era is an interesting era. No longer restricted by starting with an already established Doctor, JNT helped to mould the Fifth Doctor era, along with the likes of Eric Sayward, Robert Holmes and Peter Davison, amongst many others. Casting Davison, the youngest Doctor at the time, was a risky move that paid off, and now makes you wonder why anybody was so worried. If anything, Davison's youth made for a more unique incarnation. Like any era of television, it is a product of its time, but many of the stories are still relevant today. The Fifth Doctor has continued since 94, however, in a whole range of stories from across a variety of media. Since 1999, The Fifth Doctor has appeared in hundreds of big Finnish audio adventures, in the monthly range mostly, but there are occasionally special box sets as well. The only Fifth Doctor audio adventure I have listened to at the time of writing is the 2000 adventure The Mutant Phase. I remember it being pretty good and it was my first experience of Big Finnish. Alongside numerous appearances in books and comic books, The Fifth Doctor made a return to television in the 2007 mini-episode Time Crash. The episode was written specifically for Children in Need and it aired during the annual telethon. In the episode, the Fifth Doctor appeared alongside the Tenth Doctor as played by David Tennant. It was the first time in the revived series there has been a multi-Doctor story. Brief though it was, it was still fantastic and slightly bizarre to see a classic Doctor interacting with a modern day Doctor. On a somewhat related note, in 2013, Pete Davison directed and starred in the Five-ish Doctors reboot, a wonderful spoof and tribute to the programme. The programme was regarded as a hit and was nominated for a Hugo Award where it was up against the Doctor Who 50th anniversary special. It worked as a way to include the classic Doctors in the anniversary, though of course there was the big finish special, The Light at the End.
The fifth Doctor is a hugely underrated incarnation of the Doctor. Perhaps this was inevitable when you're the guy who has to come after Tom Baker, but I think the fifth Doctor is more appreciated now than he may have been at the time. The writing is certainly inconsistent, and some of the problems from his first season never really went away. This could be why this era isn't as talked about or praised compared to the likes of the Pertwee or Tom Baker eras. The fifth Doctor was the most human and down-to-earth incarnation at this stage of the show. Davison, along with the writing team, helped to create a really brilliant character. The oddball idiosyncrasies that we associate with the Doctor are still there, but a toned down. I've never really been the biggest fan of the fifth Doctor and he's probably my least favourite classic Doctor. Some of the issues with this era carried over into the sixth Doctor era where the BBC were growing increasingly impatient with the show but that's a story for another time. The standard of classic Doctors is so high that having a least favourite is both inevitable and not inherently a bad thing. I do enjoy the series show, just not as much as the other classic versions, but in the fandom this incarnation has become something of an underdog, but when you think about the fifth Doctor as a character, that really makes perfect sense.